Uh, let's go ahead and bring in Kevin Rowland from On-Site Security. Kevin, good right. to see you, buddy. Good to see you. What's, what's, what's new? What is it that you want to talk about? Um, you know, the, the issues with community and workplace violence we've seen as a big problem, growing problem in the uh, communities. And uh, we think we've developed something that's going to help assist with that. Well, let's, let, let's talk about that before I kill Schuler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I got uh, on-site security. company has been in business almost 25 years, Dwayne Rodriguez, owner and president. Um, I got involved with them back in 2005, managing human resources, doing some training and such with them. Uh, primarily uh, worked with hospital security, uh, manufacturing, a downtown bike patrol program in Visalia on Main Street. Uh, a lot of folks may have seen the officers on Main Street uh, patrolling. People love that, don't they? Yeah. Oh, really? It, it uh, creates a safer environment. They're really ambassadors for a lot of the merchants in that area as well. Well, you know, back in uh, late 2012, early 2013, um, as managing some re human resources in a manufacturing facility, I would had two gun issues come up in a three-month period. And typically, I've been doing this for about 20, 25 years. Um, and I might see something like that or even the threat of it maybe every five to ten years. Right. Um, and here within, you know, three months I had two issues, evacuated one facility. Here and, in the valley. Right here in the valley. And uh, I could see very quickly things had changed. What, 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 why the spike, Kevin? You know, um, the, the, obviously there's a little different generation happening. You know, folks that a little bit kind of handle things a little bit different in the workplace. Um, you know, and then as we started to research it more, we could see some of the community impact in this kind of realignment of our prison system where we're pushing state prisoners into counties and in doing early releases man mm -hmm. um, we're dropping lots of people into communities and you know, they should not be a lot incarcerated they should be incarcerated for a longer period of time so that's probably the biggest contributor to your kind of some of the issues you're seeing in in neighborhoods right now and we saw the need there to create something a little bit different um, to address that issue um, well with the prop 47 I would imagine that that issue is getting a little bigger and a little bigger all the time. Yeah, and I think we're starting to see some of the results of that. Many sheriffs have spoken out uh, about how that's starting to affect the local communities. Um, you know, some there's six of the ten counties with the highest rates of capacity and released inmates um, are through this 99 corridor. So from south of Sacramento, you're talking San Joaquin, Stanislaus, Fresno, Tulare, and Kern counties. And we're seeing a lot more activity, a lot more vagrancy issues. I mean, you got people casing neighborhoods, you got home invasion issues, um, a lot of things. There's a lot of mental illness issues related to that as well. Um, not to mention some of the, uh, you know, the drug issues with meth and, and such. So it's driving an increase in a lot of that. And, uh, you know, we really need to step up as community business owners to try to do something about that. And how do we do that? You know, that's what uh, we started to look at. Uh, Dwayne Rodriguez, the president, as I said, and owner of on-site security, and I met um, in early 2013, and then we started to look at what could we do to address this kind of community issue, this community problem. Um, and kind of the, what came out of that meeting was I started to do some more research into it, and we needed to bring together a group or a team, kind of an advisory team, and uh, reached out to a, a colleague of mine. He's a former federal agent, NCIS, retired gentleman, a uh, criminal justice uh, professor, former law enforcement, um, a, a chaplain that I'd worked with before that's been a police chaplain and worked in that industry, um, and also a, some legal counsel, obviously, to keep, keep everybody out of trouble. Um, so in forming that team and, and building that program, we seen we needed to, to develop some special skills for some security officers, not your typical observe and report guys. Right. That's been frustrating with me in the past. I've seen that with other companies that would just stand back and watch things happen, and uh, that's very hard hard to kind of swallow. Because that's not really security. No, <laughs> no, that's writing a report the next day and turning it in, you know, uh -huh. but you're not preventing anything. And our, our idea and concept was about preventing it from happening. We could see the benefit of that in our downtown program on bike patrol. Uh, you know, they're, they're equipped with tasers. They got GoPro cameras on their body. They got a vest uh, as well as GoPro camera on their bike. Um, and so we wanted to equip them with additional skills and things that we could put into the community to help, help kind of combat this problem. Like what? You know, uh, one of the main things uh, I reached out, I'm a big, I know you had some folks on here before from 559, and uh, I'm a big MMA fan, and uh, I uh, kind of researched and, and found out what the Gracies were doing, uh, kind of the originators of the UFC. 
And uh, what they had done, they had created, it's called Gracie Survival Tactics, and it's designed for law enforcement and the military. They train the Army Rangers and a lot of military folks. Um, and teaching them some tactics that's related to that because, frankly, some folks that have some of these other jujitsu skills were really giving some other folks without them a hard time on the street. Um, so I became certified. We have another certified trainer in that. So we train the officers in that as well as some uh, multitude of de-escalation techniques. We don't want to get to that, but it's amazing when you're prepared for that. You have a lot more confidence to de-escalate things verbally. And the, and the person on the other end uh, thinks about it a little differently, I think so. doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. And, and we've seen it in our officers already. They walk a little bit different. <laughs> they're, they're, they're willing to kind of de-escalate things and maybe not you know, have to go through the taser or something like that because they have a lot, lot more confidence in being able to handle themselves if it does go to the ground. Um, along with that, um, you, you know, just specialized uh, training to de-escalate without lethal force. That's our, that's our goal. Okay. Now, you guys are based out of Visalia? That's correct. That's correct. But this program is going to be a statewide. We're rolling it out in Fresno, uh, Tulare, and Kings County. That's, that's home to us and is also one of the biggest areas of problem and concern. Um, so 24-hour bike patrol. Uh, security for officers in neighborhoods, very affordable. I mean, a lot of the programs, seventy nine ninety nine a month, when the whole community kind of works together in that neighborhood, it allows us to kind of patrol and be able to handle a lot of things in there. Got some neat technology, social media, uh, GPS summonsing app that allows them to uh, summons the officer through an app on their phone, can, no can respond. So wow. got some nice stuff going on there. What are, what are some of the things you're hearing from people that are using this? It, you know, it's, uh, you know, people are taking things off their porches. They're taking, stealing things out of their garages. Uh, people walking through neighborhoods that are really casing the neighborhoods now. People that don't belong in these certain neighborhoods, they can tell they're out of place in that neighborhood. And we're seeing a because lot of Because they have that. their eyes open and they're working together. Exactly, exactly. And we, we capitalize on social media. I mean, that's a big piece, creating multiple platforms. We're across all platforms of social media. Uh, we utilize nextdoor.com. That's one that a lot of the police departments are pushing to connect the communities and neighborhoods. Uh, so it's a good way to talk to your neighbors about that, to kind of bring something like this into that neighborhood. C communication is something that a lot of people have, have lost over the years. Yeah. But very important when it comes to things like this. Exactly. And, and maybe they're not ready to talk face-to-face -face anymore, but you know what? They'll go online. They'll go on their phones. They'll send out information that they wouldn't normally pick up a phone and call somebody for. So awesome. we wanted to utilize that as much. Uh, if people want to get a hold of you, Kevin, how they do that? Yeah, they can uh, either on-site, vp at yahoo.com, um, or our phone number, our office number, 559-636-0735. Uh, <laughs> Um, if they're very serious and want, want me to talk to like a block watch group or something right. like that, call my cell phone, 559-805-7168. Uh, I'll be willing to come out and share it with the people in their community and get something going like this for them. And you're talking about the people in the South Valley right now. You know, all up and through the Valley here. I mean, uh, anybody that hears it, anywhere. we'll do it anywhere. We, we recruit criminal justice students, uh, graduates, uh, some of our returning veterans. Um, you know, I met, met with a Marine uh, recruiter and also Army recruiter, and we utilize those individuals, especially they have a career path into law enforcement, and those are the types of individuals we recruit into this program, not your typical eat a donut coffee on the front of their shirt security so, officer. So you're, you're looking for employees also? Also, yeah, because we're, we're, this is really starting to take off up through the valley, so um, I'll come speak to criminal justice students in their classes and such, and we do a mentoring and everything along with that. We want them to be at the head of the class when they get into law enforcement, corrections, the military. Um, so we, we really think this is going to be a big help to the community. Awesome. Kevin, Great. I love what you guys are doing. It's you so betcha. cool, man. Thank you, sir. And while, I'm, while you're here, thanks for being a sponsor of The Buzz. We appreciate you. You betcha. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Stick around.